Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi. Hope you all are doing well. So today we are here with um, this credit card fraud detection series, right? So under this credit card fraud detection, uh, we will actually be doing a lot of analysis with a lot of machine learning algorithms. We'll be training up the model, we'll be testing up the model, right? With the help of Escalon, the Keras, we will be using all of these respective libraries for our analysis for further uh, like putting up our ML algorithm. Right, so this is going to be so interesting project over here and this is a project which you can actually put it up into your resumes. You can showcase this into your resume and uh, you can go ahead for applying for any data analyst, any ML engineer or any data scientist role. Okay, so this is this will be a kind of a project. If you haven't watched out my last series, which was on the Titanic data set, you can go ahead and check out those particular playlists also because that is also one of the projects which you can for sure include up into your resumes and uh, yeah, maybe go for an interviews with that particular project. So now what are we going to do and like what are we going to completely understand into this? First of all, I would do give you our intro about what is it all about right so here the particular file the particular notebook the app or whatever you say i am using that is google collab google collab is one of the softwares into which you can very 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 easily do the coding very easily you can write up the codes over here okay so now what's the benefit of using google collab so see it's it's all about working on the cloud it's a cloud-based service okay so whatever the programs whatever the projects you made or you write into the google collab notebooks those get automatically saved onto your google drives so from anywhere at any time on any of the devices your mobile phone your laptop your uh, desktop so you can access this at any time which that's one of the best benefits which you have of using the google collab right so how do you just open that just go on to a new tab write google collab over there you will be redirected to www.googlecollab.com and just from there you can just go over the file and open out a new option that is of a new notebook what i'll do i'll just very 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 quickly show you see let's like, this is my new uh, series over here so new tab i will just very simply write google collab okay Going on to this very first website, collab.research.google.com. See, this kind of a one will be opened up for me. I will just go over the file, click on the new, new notebook, and a new notebook will appear for me onto a new tab like this. Fine? So this is a complete method. How do you uh, simply make up a Google Collab notebook for writing up your programs? The very simple method, okay? Okay, I'll close both of these. Perfect. Now, from here, first of all, you could just rename up your notebook according to your sake of easiness. So I would just write project, okay, pro, project, and that project is credit card fraud detection. Okay, as simple as that right so yeah that is the like one thing which we have one second great that's the one thing right apart from that what next we have next is like you need to connect here you might be able to see a connect button right so you just have to click over that connect button so that it gets connected to your google drive it gets connected to your server right next after that Whenever you are working on the Google Collab, the very first thing is you have to upload up your data which you are or which you will be working on. Okay, so uploading the data takes place from here. Go over the files, go over this upload option from here. And from here, you can just upload up your respective place wherever your data is. My data is on a desktop only and the data is credit card. I'll just go and click over open and click over the OK button right so see downside my data has started being uploaded it will take a few minutes a few seconds also it just depends upon the size of your data that uh, how big your size of the data is accordingly it actually simply very 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 easily uploads up your all of the info of your data okay 
So that is how this uh, works out. This is my credit card. It says see that's getting uploaded. See, yo, it's right now very slow. I don't know why, but yeah, maybe. Okay, let me do one more thing. Let me very quickly upload once again this respective thing because it's not that large data which it is taking this much of time to get so. Okay, see down one is being done. Um, I will just close this thing. See the down one has op almost been done over here. Fine. So that's how you initially start working on uh, with your data or your file onto the Google Colab. See, remember this is one of the good good one of the I would say the place or a software onto which you can work. And the reason is because the the very main issue which we always face is that you might, you might have written your project in some other let's say on Jupyter notebooks right so now that particular project you can only and only access onto your own laptop only at none other place you can access that particular project right but once you have written anything onto the google collab you have made out any project onto the google collab what happens you can just access this respective project from anywhere in anyone's laptop what do you have to do simply you just have to log in your email id and from that email id just open your google collab or directly even go to the google drive also and from there you can just access up your respective programs so that's one of the um most benefits of using up this google collab fine great now that is all said i guess i have told you how to simply do up the things now i would just ah you have to even if you want to share your file you can just go over the share option from here you can just share the notebook also you'll get up a link over here so that's as simple as this respective things work out okay perfect now what we have to do let's start out with the importing of a library so i would just make it a very uh, detailed kind of a one so i would just very 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 simply try to write down up all of the stuffs so i would just simply give it one second i don't want italics i want bolts right so my very first heading will be of importing my libraries okay so importing the libraries okay fair enough so importing up the libraries now see what next we have to do for i would just very 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 simply start up importing of my libraries right so now what what other libraries we have for our importing let's see so as i told in this credit card for detection thing we will be like using for lots and lots of libraries uh maybe your ml or algorithms also which will help us to train our data test out our data for that i would be using the sklearn and the keras also but at the initial level at the initial very initial level maybe at the starting we always require uh, some of the libraries which helps us for the data cleaning and data visualization right so what i would do i would just simply write import numpy as np okay and next i would just write import pandas as p so this numpy stands for numerical python right you know and uh, what are we doing up over here we are just very 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 simply importing or uh, giving up a very short name we are importing the library which is where numpy which will help me to deal up with the uh, numerical data okay and we are just giving a short form to this numpy library that is np okay secondly what i will be doing secondly we are just importing out a pandas library that will help me to uh, give us simple visualization and even the cleaning and all of those stuffs for my data so for that pandas i am giving up a short name as pd now it totally depends if you want you can give these things if you do not want you can't give these thing that's completely on to you but there is always a way for writing the programs or for making the projects or for working on with the data there is always a like method which is being followed by everyone over here right so that method is this ki we just import up a library and give them a short form 
and short form is not also that for numpy you are giving nm or ne or something like that no there is a standard name which is set down for each and every single library so for numpy the standard name which is set down is as np the pandas the standard name which is set down is as pd right so it completely there is a standard sort of a method how do you do these respective things so because we always have to write a program write a project anything in such a way that if any person goes and opens your notebook and check out your whole program or project without any problem that respective person is easily able to understood understand what are you exactly trying to do in this complete project or in this complete program right that's our main motive to behind writing out our programs right so that is why that is the reason we follow a standard method which is b over t right so i hope i am pretty clear with this respective thing to all of you about the libraries which we will be using up i have just written two of them right here so we are left out with 20 tells more that will be following up into the further videos right so if you have enjoyed this video do share this video with your friends to like this video and do not forget to subscribe out my channel we'll see you there in the next video